Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hello. If you are returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate you. So today is going to be our fifth installment, fourth installment, fourth installment, I believe, of me reacting to fat acceptance TikToks. It seems to be going pretty well on my channel, so I'm going to keep doing it because <laughs> I like doing it as well. Um, today's video does not have a sponsor, so we're just gonna get right into it because who cares about a long intro? Oh, actually, first of all, I'm wearing a very good shirt for this, for this kind of content, I feel like. My friend got it for me for my birthday and I love it, so yeah. Okay, let's get into the reaction, just, okay, let's go. Hey Taylor Swift, what the f dude? Being fat is not a bad thing, and in five seconds of your music video, you have successfully reinforced the idea that it is. And believe me, I'm empathetic that she has had an eating disorder and struggles with her relationship with food and herself, but that does not give her permission to perpetuate a really harmful fucking narrative. That is not a feeling. And feeling fat or fearing being fat or not liking the way you look, which is often what feeling fat actually is, does not mean that you deal with these systemic issues that actual fat people actually deal with. In 2010 to 2014, I was a counselor for teenage girls. And if this music video had come out then and they would have seen their fucking idol standing on a scale, looking disappointed and disgusted with herself and the word fat coming up, I can only imagine how hurt and disgusted with themselves so many of them would have been. And I'm sure there's a lot of people right now who are feeling that way. Like Taylor, you have fat fans. Did you consider them? It blows my mind that someone with this much power and influence who's all about empowerment and all this bullshit would do something so short-sighted and out of touch. And so I ask again, what the f*** Taylor Swift? Okay, so I've been wanting to talk about this um, for a minute, the whole Taylor Swift fat situation. Um, <laughs> I saw the, I saw Rolling Stone posted this screenshot on their Instagram. Hold on, let me find it. Or it wasn't a screenshot, it was just a post, but... It was really funny. Hold on. Oh, here it is. It's this. Taylor Swift forced to minimize her disordered eating experience because people complained. And that's like exactly what I think that can this all this whole thing can be boiled down to. I'm not going to lie, when I saw it initially, I like I was like, "Oh, I kind of understand what they're saying because like if if like 16 year old me, 15, 16 year old me saw Taylor Swift in a music video, like with that kind of imagery, I probably would have felt not great about myself. Like, I'm not gonna lie. But I think then a really interest and now I think a really good, a really interesting conversation could be opened up about this because just because you're having one experience doesn't mean another person can't have a different one. And I was friends with, and I still am friends with some people who are very conventionally attractive or like what society deems to be conventionally attractive, very thin, beautiful, whatever. And they dealt with the same thing that Taylor's talking about in that video and in that song. And so like, I have experienced that experience through some of my very best friends and it sucks for them and it sucks to see them go through it and I get it like I get what she was trying to convey and because now yeah now the that part's like taken out of the video and like I said I get it I get what people were trying to say she did have an ED experience like that is what she's talking about and I can only imagine how much worse that experience would be being so heavily in the public eye at such a young age lest we forget Taylor Swift was only like 16 or 17 when her first song like popped off right so she's basically grown up like just under so much scrutiny in the public eye and I'm sure it did lead to some serious serious eating disorder like body image issues that shouldn't be diminished like yeah seeing taylor swift worried that she was coming up fat and that fat was being in a negative way like or being used in a negative way again i feel like it might have been able to be conveyed a little bit better maybe with different verbiage on the scale or something but like <sighs> 
like part of the diagnostic criteria of having an eating disorder is like fear of getting larger. So like this person talking about this being like, I'm not going to diminish her eating disorder experience. You are like, that's part of the disorder. I don't know. I just, yeah, I, it, I get where they were coming from, but do I think it needed to be taken to the extent that it was? No. Do I think she needed to essentially be bullied by millions of people to take this bit that, that was portraying her experiences out of a mu out of her music video? No. I don't think it had to get to that point at all. Um, I think it's been ridiculous. And again, it goes back to what I've talked about in other, other videos about how just because your experience is one way does not mean that other people don't have other experiences that are completely different than your own and different problems and mental problems and feelings. Like, we shouldn't be diminishing people's feelings. I don't care how big of a celebrity you are. Taylor Swift is relatively unproblematic. She seems like a ray of sunshine. If this was someone who just caused problems all the time and was like an extremely problematic person, then sure, maybe. But like, leave her alone. And I'm not even a huge like Swifty. Like I'm not, I'm not coming from that angle either. <laughs> but like, yeah, I just thought this whole thing was ridiculous. I do not think Taylor Swift is fat phobic. I think she dealt with the mental scrutiny that came from being in the public eye and growing up in the public eye. And in a in an impossible time for female beauty standards as well. And which is coming back, mind you. I'm thinking about making a video on how like the whole Tumblr girl aesthetic is coming back and like Finspo and all that kind of stuff. Um it's coming back and which maybe this might be not be the right time to put that kind of stuff in a video either because it is coming back. But I just don't think it needed to be brought up to the level that it was brought up to because as many fat people there are in the world, as many fat girls as there are in the world, there are as just as many, if not more, girls like Taylor Swift in the world. And their feelings don't deserve, don't deserve to be diminished either just because they're thin. Um, yeah. So that's my very, like, succinct feelings on this whole topic. I just think it was ridiculous. Do I think they probably could have used different verbiage in the video? Sure. But, like, I don't think we should diminish another person's feelings to spare other people's feelings. That's just not cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I think the whole thing is ridiculous and it got blown out of proportion. And, yeah, and I just wanted to put that in here first because I've been wanting to talk about it for a while. I don't think Taylor did anything wrong. I think her experiences and feelings are valid and I think she deserves to be able to share those with the world however she sees fit because music is art and music videos are art too and art is meant to document personal experiences. Okay, on to the next one. Plain of Ben Jerry's ice cream and it's about a thousand calories for the plane. And anybody I know can finish this. These kind of- First of all, the girl that was talking about the ice cream, I love her. She makes very good recipes. Anyways, let's go swaps are the exact reason why so many people have a fucking horrendous relationship with food i know so many people that are like i can't even keep a pint of ice cream in my house because i know i'm just going to destroy the whole thing i know people that have asked other people that live with them to literally hide food so they can't find it because if they do they're going to destroy the whole bag let me tell you this the answer to feeling so out of control around food where you literally have to ask people to go hide it, you have to throw it in the garbage, you have to pour ketchup on it in the garbage, you have to not even keep it in your house, is that more rules and being more food avoidant makes you more food obsessed. I have had the same ice cream in my freezer for maybe three weeks and I literally forgot about it until I made this video. A couple of years ago, that ice cream would have been replaced five times and I would have destroyed all of them, probably each in their own sitting. Because I avoided foods like that completely. Now that I fully allow all foods in my diet with no restriction, I'm not obsessing about things that I buy, obsessing about treats, obsessing about food that I ate, that I will eat, that I haven't eaten. I don't obsess over food at all. And like health swaps, I think, in and of itself are not the problem you know like if you actually enjoy that make it eat it up i don't care it's when you're having that hell swap because of the guilt and shame of indulging or just fucking allowing yourself to have something just because you actually want it food is meant to be enjoyed 
Food is made for us to connect, to express ourselves, to experience an ecstasy of life. You do not have to make a fucking health swap for every food that you personally like. And let me tell you this, the stress you have over eating the foods that you actually like is infinitely worse than the food itself. So if you wanna do a health swap because you enjoy it, do it up. If you wanna sit down and enjoy every bite of Ben and Jerry's until it's all gone, do it up. But you are not doing a bad thing for picking Ben and Jerry's over a volume fucking cheesecake, sugar-free stevia smoothie. You can just eat food because you enjoy it. Okay, so this one's a little bit different in that it's not like a fat activist or a fat acceptance movement person. It's just a person that came across my For You page, um, probably because I partake in the first girl's content. <laughs> Um, I do kind of agree with what she, I do kind of understand where she's coming from with this for sure. Um, it took me a while to realize that I don't have to health swap every single thing that I eat. <laughs> um, one of those things for me is peanut butter. Once I finally allowed myself to stop trying to like PB2 and just eating and just started eating normal peanut butter and just measuring it properly, I was a much happier person. <laughs> because I fucking love peanut butter and I hate PB2. But if you like PB2, more power to you. I kind of wish I did, but I don't. So, and I'm not, I'm just gonna stop trying. But in response to what she's saying, um, some people wanna lose weight. Some people need to lose weight. Some people want to eat healthier. Some people need to eat healthier. And if making a health swap for foods that you enjoy, for something that you probably enjoy almost as much, if that's gonna help somebody, just let them have it, you know? Maybe they don't like it as much, but maybe it's just something they need to do. And let's not demonize doing that because I know that doing that has helped a lot of people. It's helped me. Like, I have, I ever since I've had weight loss surgery, if you're new here, I had weight loss surgery four years ago. Um, ever since I've had weight loss surgery, so it, it changes your whole metabolic system, so it changes your taste buds and how you feel about different foods. And so I now have a raging sweet tooth. <laughs> like, I never used to be a sweets junk food person. I was always like a savory junk food person. Now I have a fucking savage sweet tooth. <laughs> and I have had to find ways to eat a piece of that without gaining my weight back. And it's been hard, but I'm now, I've figured out some pretty good ways to do that. And so for me, health swaps like this are a necessity. And for a lot of people, health swaps like these are a necessity to stay sane and healthy. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I think health swaps like these also help people who have to eat sugar-free or dairy-free or whatever. Like, I can eat Ben & Jerry's ice cream, but I can only eat, like, maybe, like, half a serving of it. Because if I eat too much of it, it will make me sick. Like, it makes me feel really ill. So, but I love ice cream. So, I turn to, like, light ice creams or, like, what this girl made, it, like, protein ice cream, that kind of stuff. Because it doesn't make me feel sick. And I know she's like trying to backtrack in this video a little bit too by saying if you like it then eat it up or whatever. But like the whole video is her being super aggressive over health swaps. And I don't think, and I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, if you do know her story, let me know down in the comments. Maybe I'm completely off here, but like I just don't, I don't see her and I don't see someone who has struggled with being super morbidly obese pre-diabetic with liver problems at one point in her life and is now having to fight that to not get that way again because once you get that way and you lose weight it is very easy to get that way again and so I know a lot of the people in my audience are also losing weight or have lost weight and I feel like you can relate to that it's hard it's hard to not fall back into bad habits and I feel like health swaps help you not fall back into bad, bad habits so yeah, I just didn't agree with this <laughs> and I don't think we should demonize anybody's health choices um, or like diet choices regardless. Um, yeah, and I just, I don't know, this video just rubbed me the wrong way so I wanted to put it in here. Anyways, on to the next one. The plan 
Oh no, there's Melanie. That's a shame, she's really nice. So this is a short one. It just says on the screen when one of your fat creators starts posting about their quote unquote weight loss journey. I know people like when I read the TikToks, so I'm gonna keep reading the TikToks. Um, and it's like the person's name is the fat baddie. So like they take pride in being fat, which is great for them. Like whatever, do your thing bestie. Um, but let's not demonize other people for choosing to lose weight. Choosing to lose weight is already <laughs> an extremely hard and sometimes humiliating decision. Um, that requires just a lot of vulnerability with yourself and it's a hard, it's a hard decision to make coming from someone who has made it. Um, it's, it's really hard. So regardless of how you feel about it, let's not uh, make people feel bad for coming to terms with that decision for their own body. I also wanted to show this one because I think it's a perfect example of people in the fat acceptance community, body positivity community, very much so alienating people who they've known who have decided to lose weight just because they've decided to lose weight. I don't think there's any shame in choosing maybe to not be friends with people for different reasons or whatever, but let's not publicly shame them for those reasons. I just don't feel like this kind of content is necessary and I look at it, I whenever I see this kind of content, I immediately revert back to like young Megan on the internet who was like very much in what she thought was the body positive community but then kind of turned out to be the fat acceptance community. Um, it makes me think of being in that like place but also wanting to lose weight at the same time but feeling a lot of different feelings about losing weight because all the people that I followed on the internet said it was a bad thing and said it was fat phobic which was the last thing I wanted to be considered and so like again I just don't think this content is necessary for many reasons it's snarky it's bitchy and it's unnecessary in my opinion alienating and makes people feel like shit anyways let's keep going <laughs> Day I started to diet because this shit. Oh! So I've seen a little bit of discussion around this video, and I've mostly seen people feeling bad for Quinlan because she clearly has some disordered thought patterns. But I honestly don't get it. Like, I don't feel bad for these people anymore. <laughs> I just find it really upsetting that people tend to empathize with thin people who are clearly deathly afraid of becoming fat or having any feature that fat bodies have, rather than empathizing with fat people who naturally have roles without contorting their body in a weird way, and thinking about how it might affect their psyche to see someone literally gag on the internet at the thought of resembling them. So I've seen stitches to the first video a lot on TikTok, um, and I don't think I've included one yet, so I figured I'd include one today. Um, but in case you're listening to the video, the first girl who was like, I need to lose weight because this bit is like pointing to a back roll of hers, saying she's not happy with it, which is valid because it's her body. Yeah, I do feel bad for her because she obviously does have some sort of problem or like like morphed view of her body. Um, Cause her body to me looks extremely healthy. Like it doesn't look like there's an excess of body weight on it or whatever. Um, and so I do feel bad for her that she feels that way. Um, but again, her feelings should not be diminished just because she's thin. Thin people, have body image issues too. And like I've said in every other fucking video of mine, I am over 200 pounds still. I am not thin, but I still feel very passionately that thin people are allowed to have body image issues too, because it's just a, a part of the human experience to have body image issues, as I've learned from making these videos and hearing people's stories in my DMs and in my comments and all this stuff. People have body image issues and it sucks, but it's just a way of life. And I don't think fat activists get the right to say other people's body image issues aren't valid because they're not fat. I've never understood that even when I was bigger. I never got that rhetoric like ever. <laughs> and if I did, it was for a brief time because I've always, un like I've felt, I've always been able 
to empathize with other people's body image issues, regardless of if they were fat or thin or whatever, because it just sucks all around. <laughs> but like I've said in other video, in my last reaction video too, I would say, and I thought this was a hot take, but a lot of people agreed with me, so I'm gonna say it again. I think that in society that we live in today, it is almost less acceptable for a seemingly thin person to have back rolls or a belly pouch than it is for just a fat person to. If you're fat, people know you're fat. Like, <laughs> people know I'm fat by looking at me. People know I have a hanging belly by looking at me. People probably know I have back rolls by looking at me. But like, my thin, my super thin friends, like, they don't look like they'd have back rolls or a belly pouch and whatever. And nothing's wrong with having those things. But in the society that we live in, people are treated as though it is wrong to have those things. We are marketed to, to be told it is wrong to have those things. And so, especially if you're otherwise thin appearing. Ah. So yeah, I do feel bad for the girl in the first video for thinking that something's wrong with her body because she has a back roll, even though that's a completely normal thing for people to have. Um, but I also just feel bad for some thin people because it is hard to have rolls for them and it is hard to have bellies for them because I think they're almost seen in a worse light than fat people are sometimes. And yeah, so. Let's not diminish other people's experiences. Okay, let's move in. Moving on to the next one. What's something that you do that you're pretty sure really pisses off thin people? So the thing that I do is not necessarily a fat person thing. It can be done by any person. And in fact, I think more people should try it um, just to see what happens. And some people may think I'm a dick for this, um, but I do not like to engage in the prescribed back and forth that one usually has with someone who has lost weight um, or is trying to lose weight or is on a diet and is telling you about it. Um, especially when that person is clearly um, expecting praise from me, I like to subvert that expectation. Um, so if I'm alone with this person, I might just say, okay. And if I'm in a group with that person, um, I just won't participate in the, in the praise ritual of someone pursuing weight loss. Um, it definitely confuses people. I don't know if it makes them angry. So I included this one um, because I think it's mean. <laughs> I really, I really just think it's mean. Um, because in any other instance, if somebody was talking about something they're proud of, they would be probably expecting a little bit of praise and a little bit of congratulations from people. Um, and I don't understand why weight loss has to be any different than that. Um, if somebody is talking to you about something that they've done that they're proud of, that, ha that they feel has made them a better person, go with it. Like, even if you don't necessarily agree like all the time, like with it all the time, like just go with it. Like I, and, and I have had people do this to me a little bit, not just as bl as bluntly as like this person's talking about, but like it hurts. Like it really, like I'm happy for myself and I'm proud of myself and that's all I really need. But when I'm talking about it to somebody else, it feels good when they share in my excitement and they share in the pride that I have for myself. And I think we need to celebrate other people's victories instead of put them down. And that goes for anything. Um, but I guess in this context, it's weight loss. Um, just because you don't feel like a person has necessarily needed to lose weight or you don't necessarily maybe don't agree with the idea of intentional weight loss, which is weird in itself, but whatever. If somebody's proud of something they did, weight loss or not, just tell them that you're proud of them too. It'll make their day. Like, I just don't see why you have to be, like, snarky about it. Because for some people it might really hurt their feelings. And I don't think anybody really wants to hurt anybody's feelings. But maybe fat acceptance people do. Anyways, on to the next one. <laughs> Not the end. That was the end! 
This is a short one, guys. Wow. Okay. That was the end. Sorry for forgetting how many I put into this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the end. In conclusion, um, Taylor Swift isn't fat phobic for having a uh, disordered and eating disorder. Um, she, yeah, uh, that's my thoughts on that. Um, let's celebrate people when they are proud of themselves for doing something and accomplishing something really big. Uh, let's not alienate friends for choosing to lose weight. And those are the only three I can think of right now. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Uh, be sure to be kind to others. Be kind to yourself. Drink your water. Take your meds. Thank you again so much for watching. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye. <laughs>